All right, Pisces, welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. I am so happy to have you guys here. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. Um, these are general readings, so take what resonates and leave the rest. Let's see what today has in store for us. What does Pisces need to know right now, please, Spirit? What does Pisces really need to know right now? Guys, when I was pulling the cards, I was literally guided and realized that every box that I pulled when I was pulling the Oracle cards said love on it. And um, that's definitely not the majority of Oracle cards that I have, but I really felt guided. So let's see. Let's see what this is about for Pisces. For Pisces. Wow. Okay. Pisces, I feel like you have something really special coming in. There is someone watching over this or someone facilitating this or this is like divinely guided, a divinely guided situation. You have the guardian angel showing up here in your reading and you have sacred union. So there is definitely this energy. It's like, you know, in the lover's card, how there's the angel over the masculine and the feminine sort of bringing them together. Or like in temperance, the ener bringing two energies together by the angel. So there is this energy, I feel like, of, you know, there is someone out there for you. Of course there is. There always is. Um, and, you know, um, I feel like there's something happening here. There's either, it's either some kind of healing. I keep being brought to the lovers and the temperance card. Um, so there's either some kind of healing or something that needed to take place over the course of time, gently, slowly, in its own time, in its own course, in its own path, in its own way. Um, and you may still be in, on that path or in that energy. This is a general reading. So everybody's on a different timeline. Everybody is, you know, um, going to arrive, quote unquote, at a different time, right? But... Um, and with tarot card readings, I find that it's like, you know, uh, there is a time frame, I think, especially like in the next six months or the next eight months, I feel like this energy will definitely show itself. Um, and I'm feeling guided to say that to you. So there's probably a reason for it. Like if it doesn't happen tomorrow, don't, don't think it's not happening or it's not happening behind the scenes still. It takes time. I keep getting it takes time. Um, so there's just this energy of grounding, balancing, finding harmony. Um, I, I get like some kind of like reinvigoration of the spirit or the soul. I don't know if this is you or your person, or if this is even like a general energy of the collective, you know, with all the eclipses we've had, you know, it's breaking and shifting paradigms and bringing about a great amount of change. So there is something about the resurgence of, something really, I don't know, I get sacred. So yeah, I just keep getting fear not. There is someone for you. Don't, don't worry about this. Don't focus on this. I'll let, let, you know, put it in the hands of the divine and just let kind of like nature take its course or let it unfold for you. Okay, Pisces, so no cards fell out, but these cards, you know, came back into the deck in such a way that we have to look at them. Okay, so, all right. In your quest to manifest the energy of love, you realize that every person and experience has value. Wow, that, so, okay, when we're manifesting, so um, it's that old kind of adage, right, of where, Sometimes you have to find out what you don't want in order to find out what you do want. Or sometimes it's like you have to kiss a bunch of frogs before you find the prince or, um, you know, it's that kind of energy. And it's like all of those things help inform you as to what is really important to you to manifest or to draw down or to bring into your life. And so there's a heavy emphasis on 
focusing on this. You may even want to write it down. Things that you loved about people. What was that very special quality about someone that you would love to have in a partner? And, and what are the things that you've never experienced that you would love to have in a partner? It's about getting it really clear, you with you. Um, and there is some help from, you know, also coming to the space of knowing that all of what you have been through has not been in vain. It was not wasted. It was not something that we throw away. We're just done with when that person's gone, that energy is gone. No, when we extend unconditional love or when we do our best to give love to a person, that love will come back to you. It may not come back to you from the same person that you gave it to, but it will come back to you. And there's this kind of understanding that, you know, whether it's a lesson or it's forever, there is an inherent value to every experience that we have. It informs us, it shapes us, it's an opportunity for growth, for change, for some kind of benefit. And have we truly kind of extricated the benefit from all of those experiences? Or have we been like, well, that was just a waste, kiss that goodbye, you know, move on you know, kind of energy. Like, have we really gotten the gifts from all those things? And then it says, action. You have the courage to express the unique loving colors of your soul. So the, you're definitely manifesting. You're definitely connected here. What you are thinking about, you are bringing about at this time. And, you know, w with this energy of cooperation, it's like this angel is trying to bring into your life what you are looking for. And, this is about being very clear about what that is, you with you, like what it is that you you especially would love to see or have or feel or experience. Um, so it's bringing your mindful attention to it, actively manifesting, possibly even I keep getting writing it down. All right, so let's give these another shuffle and see if anything comes out. Okay, wow. So this has been a heavy theme lately. Wow, see, I told you it's gonna take a minute. Um, I definitely have that feeling. Wow, guys, oh, okay. So gratitude has been a theme that has been coming around a lot in your readings, Pisces, and I feel like this is a time, a really important moment to focus on gratitude. What you think about, you're bringing about right now. It's almost as if you have a direct connection to this angel who is working things out for you on the other side. And this is one of those things where it's like, you may even want to express your gratitude to this angel for working things out for you on the other side. You know, I don't know why I'm getting that, but it's like the more gratitude you express, the more gratitude that you feel, the more that you look at your life and say, my life is fine the way that it is. I'm happy with it. I'm happy with myself. I'm happy with this particular aspect or that particular aspect, or I'm incredibly fortunate. I might have to do laundry, but instead of being grumpy and crappy about it, I'm going to be thankful that I have clothes, that I have a washer and a dryer. You know, um, you know, we move through life and we move through life in these stages and as we distance ourselves from the stage before us, we have a tendency to forget, um, to, to kind of distance ourselves from like, for example, since I brought up laundry, um, you know, like at my house growing up, we had a washer and dryer and, um, and actually I never did my own laundry. I, I think my mom must have done my laundry. Um, and when I went to college, I had to do my own laundry. I had no idea how to do laundry, but then I learned how to do laundry because I had to. Um, but we had these awful like washers and dryers in the basement of my dorm. And like, and then when we lived in our apartment, we had to put all our laundry in our car and go to a laundromat. It was awful. It, it made life so much more difficult. Um, and you know, and then for a long time, you know, I had an apartment without a washer and dryer when I first got, got together with my husband like just so many different times. And then it was like, you know, when I first got a washer and dryer in my place again, oh, it was like, this is the best. This is amazing. I'm so happy that I never have to deal with that again, you know? And so at first we're so grateful for it, but then over time, it's like we get back into that, oh, I have to do laundry kind of energy. 
Um, I probably 20 years or more ago, I was watching Oprah Winfrey. I loved Oprah Winfrey. I still love Oprah Winfrey, although I don't know, there may be some things going on there that aren't so great. Um, but I've learned a lot from her show. And um, she had on a guest called Gary Zukoff. And he was talking about how, you know, sometimes um, we forget, um, like we get grumpy about things. And he even directly quoted about laundry. He was saying, you know, um, moms sometimes that are doing laundry for their whole family or whatever can get really like, oh my gosh, this laundry is overwhelming, blah, 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 blah. And so we bring that energy to what we're doing. We bring that energy to doing the laundry. And, you know, we may ruin clothes or we may just, you know, be very like, oh, this stinks, da, 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 and kind of let it wreck or, or kind of make our mood bad. Um, but if instead we think, oh, you know, my kids are only going to be little for so long. I'm only going to be doing their laundry for so long. And then they're going to grow up and they're going to do their own laundry. And they're not going to need me as much anymore. And then eventually they're going to move out. And, you know, I'm so lucky that I have these kids or that I have this situation. It's like when we look at it, when we change the way that we look at things and we choose to look at things from... A perspective that is one of gratitude and one of love in all that we do even the crappy things that we do or the things that we're not particularly enthralled with um, we we bring we bring a different energy not just to that task but to our entire life to our day and to all of the people around us um, and it helps us really to be fully present in the moment. And that that energy of, oh my gosh, my kids are only going to be little for a short amount of time spreads. So then when your kid is like, hey mom, do you want to play a game? You're probably much more likely to say, yeah, you know what? I'm going to take this five or 10 minutes and play this game with my child instead of being like, no, I can't. I'm sorry. I don't have time right now. You know, you're going to savor the moment. You're going to take a different approach. It's going to have a holistic effect on your entire life. So whatever it is, you know, and even doing the dishes, I, I have found like doing the dishes, um, sometimes it's like the warm soapy water. I have a window that I look out while I do my dishes. It's almost a moment of peace and meditation for me where I can get completely present in the moment with the water, the soap, the way that it smells, the way that it feels, the view of my backyard. You know what I mean? Like all of those things. And um, and it just makes doing the dishes not so bad. You know, a lot of times I have breakthrough moments. You know, people are like, oh, I have my best ideas in the shower. I, I sometimes have um, the best ideas while I'm washing the dishes. It's that mindless task that allows the answer to come to you. So, you know, everything has its upside, right? Um, and it's kind of in focusing on that and remembering and being mindful and bringing gratitude to all of those moments in the day. It's our choice how we look at things. You know, the tasks that we have, that we have to do, be, you know, that sometimes we don't want to do, you know, it's going to be there regardless. But it is your choice if you look at it like it is a blessing or you look at it like it is a curse. Um, and so it's just being mindful and choosing gratitude and choosing love wherever you can, whenever you can. Um, and when you cultivate a mindfulness, a mindset of love and gratitude, then you become love and gratitude. And it is a much nicer way to be. And it actually is a very liberating place to be. And you have freedom next. So your gratitude card says you fully appreciate the invaluable lessons that life lovingly presents to you. I'm grateful for all of it. Freedom. You are releasing any self-imposed restrictions or perceived limitations through the loving energy of openness. Yeah, you know, when you're open to what life brings or what life has in store for you, when instead you, you of looking at, at it in a dreadful mindset of, oh gosh, you know, da, 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 da. You, you know, and trudging along when you say, I'm going to bring a good energy to this. I'm going to bring my highest and best to everything that I do, regardless of 
of whether it's, you know, sweeping the floor or, um, you know, going out with my girlfriends. I'm going to bring an energy of, you know, you can bring the same energy to both. You can put on some tunes and rock while you sweep, you know, I do that a lot. Um, but it, it, it frees you to be fully present in the moment. It frees you to enjoy all of the aspects of your life. It frees you to get out of all of the lower vibrational energies of, I don't want to do this, but I have to. Uh, da, da, da. It, it gets you out of that mindset and it lifts you from that place altogether. So um, I feel like there's a heavy focus on this. Um, because when you're in a space of gratitude and love and freedom and the right person finds you, my goodness, wow, what is what is capable of happening there from that place? Um, you're free to follow your heart, right? You have patience. You are able to let the universe, the universal energy of transformation move according to its own loving rhythm. Yeah, this is like I'm putting my manifestation out there. I know I've, I've looked at my past experiences I've looked at the entire road that has brought me to this place and um, I, I, I'm I, very clear about the characteristics that I would like in someone else. I'm very clear about what I need from a relationship, what I'm looking for in another person, um, what would kind of make it worth it for me to allow someone into my inner sanctum that I have worked very hard to create for myself. Um, and I'm, I've put it out there. I've put it in the hands of this angel here and I'm trusting that it will happen, that, that I will, that this will come about. All right. You guys have cheerfulness on the bottom of the deck. Cheerfulness comes from our attitude and our approach, you know? Um, when, when we are grateful for even the issues that we have, that we have those issues, um, then look, you guys are getting gratitude again. <gasps> wow. You have this faith, guardian angels. You guys, I mean, seriously, you are getting gratitude and gratitude. Guardian angel and guardian angel here. I mean, this is very, like, confirmative. Like, is that a word? You guys, I always make up words when I'm, when I'm doing tarot card readings. But it, this is an energy of, you know, have faith, trust that what you are putting out there, what you are asking for, your ask is not too big for the universe. And that when you match that ask by raising your vibration in all that you do, you, your answer is just, it's only going to get higher and bigger and better. Um, and your experience of life, that's a no-lose situation. To like switch your way of thinking is a no-lose situation, honestly. Um, you have insight here. And I feel like it's kind of like this is a period of time where I feel like things are becoming clearer to you just spiritually overall. It's like, oh, that's why that happened in my life. Or this is the path that brought me here. And if it had not been this path that brought me here, I would not be who I am in this moment. Like I, I, would, I might have the same fundamental like makeup but my experiences have helped to shape me. Those lessons, those gifts that I have gotten along the way have helped me to get to this place. And I have explored those experiences and I have found the gifts and I have found the insight, the understanding and the knowledge of, you know what, this is what I need in a partnership. And you know what, this is what I'm willing to give to and this is what I'm not willing to open myself up to. And knowing myself is going to help me ensure that the path that from here on, you know, it's like you got to start where you are, right? And you, this is where you are right here, right now. And this is your starting point. And so you have the beautiful gift of insight from everything that brought you to this place. But this place, this moment right here is brand new. 
And as you move from here, um, what you create, you are creating by choice and by, yeah, by your own choices, by your own, um, it's like attitude, but you know, like how you choose to approach everything in life how you choose to look how at it, how you choose to reflect on it, how you choose to, what you are choosing to allow to affect you and how you're really responding to it, the choices that you're making from there. You know, people love to be around happy people and I'm not talking about like toxic happiness or whatever. I'm not talking about fake positive people. I'm talking about people who, I, I feel like if I was a fake positive person, you all would know that. You know what I mean? Like you would smell that rat a mile away. You guys are Pisces. You're very intuitive. I, I am a genuinely happy person and it's not because my life is perfect because nobody's life is perfect. It's because like I have set my life up and my mindset up in a way that contributes to that happiness all the time that, you know, literally sees the the happiness and sees the gratitude and sees the um the goodness or the in everything um or maybe not in everything I get off track myself I gotta get myself back on it but I just know that the experience of living the way that I'm living as opposed to the way that I was you know, once you eradicate your life of toxicity and you, you know, it's kind of start from scratch with what is left that isn't toxic and you build from there, you know, it is, it is kind of a daunting task for sure. And definitely like I had to go for years through a lot of trauma and, uh, you know, like un, un, unwinding that. Um, which I generally did through yoga and meditation um, and great master teachers and books and videos and <laughs> people in my life that I am extremely lucky to have. But it has left me in a space where, you know, I do feel like I am so much more grateful for what I have and I am so much more grateful for every little aspect of my life and, you know, um, it just makes life so much more pleasant and so much more enjoyable. And I am much more cheerful as a rule. And I think that people really like to be around me much more than they did. And, you know, I have people come up to me in malls and say to me, um, like, your energy is amazing. Like, you are so peaceful. Like, I was just drawn to you. And, you know, like I say, when I travel and I ride on airplanes and stuff like that, you know, I, I hope that I am a pillar of consciousness walking through this earth. I hope that I am spreading that energy and that peace and that love, you know, and here I feel like Pisces, this is your shift in mindset kind of into that space of really focusing on everything as, you know, how can I look at this as less of a task or a chore or a loss even, um, something that's disappointing me and how can I look at it as something that is full of potential and full of affirmation and confirmation that I am fortunate, that I am blessed, that I am, you know, um, that things are sort of beginning to work out for me or, or, or maybe always have been. It just was through a very difficult path, you know? Um, so anyway, I don't know. Take it as it resonates, you guys. All right, so let's dive in. I also, you know, if I ever come to my desk and I feel like I'm doing this because I have to, I will get up and I will walk away and I will not come back until I'm ready to sit down here and feel really lucky and excited about what I'm doing. Uh, and I, I feel very grateful that I have the opportunity to do that in life, you know? Yeah, you guys have a relationship coming in. Yeah, see, look. Um, okay. You guys are manifesting a relationship right now where you are like calling something in or you 
are finally realizing all the tools that you have at your disposal because of the things that maybe didn't always work out for you that you are transforming into knowledge that is going to help you make something work out or I don't want to say like make something work out because that feels like forcing it to work out but you have all of these tools for all of the from all of the things that didn't go your way to help and aid something that's I feel like either just beginning or hasn't quite come in yet um I feel like you guys are going to have some unexpected breakthroughs here um, as far as some of the suffering you have experienced in your life and how you're letting it affect you or whether or not you're going to continue to carry it on with you. I kind of feel like this is someone who's sort of crying her last tears over some things that have hurt in the past and she's sort of putting them away, kind of putting them where they belong and she's going to get ready to close this door on them and just sort of not revisit them again. You know, it's like, you know, it's almost like someone who's like, why have I spent so much time allowing myself to think in a way that was not serving my highest and best? Well, probably because you didn't know better. Because when you know better, you do better. And we all have this, this tendency, right? We are thinkers. We're human. Our automatic um, default setting is, let me think about this. You know, like our thoughts kind of running wild. And it's when we realize that the way we have seen things or the way that we have been thinking about things or the way, it's not just that these things happen to us. It's that we prolonged our suffering by continuing to think about it um, the way that we were thinking about it or looking at it the way we're looking at it. There's a huge mental shift here and it's bringing you into harmony with a soulmate for sure. This Two of Cups says loving union teamwork. This is, you're definitely getting a partnership. Wow. Holy crap, Pisces. You have the Two of Cups clarified by the Ace of Cups and the Ten of Cups with the Knight of Swords. This is something, when the mindset changes, when... When we are liberated of any, you know, way of looking at something that's not serving our highest to best, we are, every time we let one of those things go or something like that go, every time we begin to choose to see something a different way, we are liberating ourselves. We are freeing ourselves. We are readying ourselves. We are opening ourselves. We are changing our vibration. And that vibration is coming into vibration with something that it feels brand new. Um, not to say that it can't be a past person in a new energy, but it feels like a brand, brand new thing. And it feels like we are brand new looking at it and it feels like it's a brand new thing. And it has definitely the potential for a lot of emotional contentment for a long, long time. And it's something that comes into our life very, very quickly as we really change our mindset, as we really look at ourselves differently, look at our situation differently, look at, um, because I'm getting, it's like looking at ourselves instead of looking at it like I've been through all of these things, this is the trail of my tears. And instead looking at it like all of those experiences prepared me for this. And now I'm empowered. Now I have transmuted the pain into power. Now I have, I have these tools that I know when I'm given the opportunity to be in a relationship, when someone comes along that is worth it for me to open my inner sanctum up to, I have the tools to make it happen. I have the tools to capitalize on that opportunity with the magician energy because I'm not in a position of looking at all the pain and sort of, I don't want to say feeling sorry for myself, but there is this energy of just of like, why does this always happen to me? This is always happening to me kind of energy. Um, and it, But we're, we're not in that anymore. When we change that way of thinking or when we change the overwhelm, when we change the anxiety, when we change the daily drudge of, I don't want to do this, but I have to do it, so I'm doing it. Instead of 
feeling gratitude even for the things that we don't want to do or even you know or looking back on the past and being like that was terrible that that happened to me that was terrible that that happened to me looking back and saying you know what those things did happen to me but i don't have to continue to allow them to affect me i have survived that i have transmuted that pain into power i have i i'm i refuse to allow my past to dictate my present and my future and so i'm stepping into my power i'm realizing that all of that was training and that all of that brought me this understanding of the tools at my disposal the way that i love the way that i speak the things that i desire in my life and you know to cultivate and create and nurture a material world that is supportive of some totally different experience right okay yeah see there's this um energy that i feel like is definitely leaving you pisces at this time or that you're working through um, you have the five of cups and the two of coins with the nine of swords on the bottom of the deck. You know, when we are in a mindset of I've been hurt a lot or things have not gone my way or I, you know, I tend to pick people who are not healthy or good for me. Okay, so that causes fear and anxiety when we when we're talking about opening ourselves up to someone new or when where, you know, it, it kind of, it, it's an isolating thing, right? It keeps us on our own island. It keeps us kind of separate from everyone else. And with the five of cups here, it literally says unfulfilled expectations on it. And this is just an energy of constantly feeling defeated by life. Well, I can tell you that it has something to do with a mindset. So if in our head, right, and I'm a Libra, so I can speak to you from this place, a, a place of experience, a place of knowing, because Libras are really like known for this. Um, if, okay, let's say I meet someone, okay, and I'm like really excited. I'm like, you know, let's say it's a romantic interest, all right? So I meet this person, they're really exciting, they seem amazing, we have so much in common, it was so easy to talk to them. I haven't met someone that makes me feel this way in a really long time. Um, this person, you know, I they told me that they live here, they have a dog, they have, um, you know, they're this kind of job, whatever, whatever it is, okay? So immediately I take everything that I know that I learned about this person and I start inserting it into my life and I start seeing how, oh my gosh, we're perfect together. Oh my gosh, you know, this, we could, this could go like this, this could happen like this. And I immediately launch into sort of like fantasy land where I'm just like putting all the things that I know about this person together with everything that I know about me. And I'm thinking this person is the answer to my prayer. I'm thinking, wow, you know, and, and then let's say this person, you know, love bombs me, right? <laughs> and so they're showing up as this person and it just seems like confirmation that everything I'm thinking about this person is probably true, that they are, you know, amazing and da 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 um, And then they let me down and then they disappoint me and then they stop showing up and they start triangulating me and they start doing weird stuff that makes me feel unappreciated and unloved and unseen. And all I want to do is go back to that place where I was able to have that fantasy about that person and, you know, see how perfect it all was and how perfect it was all always going to be. You know, um, what happens when we get going too far into the future like that is we create anxiety for ourselves. Anxiety comes from our mind being too far in the future. And then we start getting anxious about trying to control it, about trying to make that come about. And what happens is oftentimes it doesn't because we're, we are a human being, we're dealing with another human being, and we're also dealing with the world as an environment for this thing. So in our head, we have created the perfect environment for these two people to come together. And these two people you know, are not bringing a ton of baggage into the situation. It's all just the best parts of everything. We're not being realistic. It's not grounded in something solid or stable. It's just, 
ideally this is what could happen. So what happens when we allow our mind to go down that path is we actually create anxiety for ourselves and we are we will almost always be disappointed by life. We will almost always feel that energy of unfulfilled expectations. What we have to do is calm that mind. We have to put those things in the Rolodex and be like, okay, I can see that there is compatibility here. There's potential compatibility here. There's potential. We have to ground ourselves. We have to root and center and say, okay, I'm going to allow life to unfold. I'm excited right now and I'm excited to be excited, but I am not going to put too many expectations going forward because I know that that only really leads to disappointment because no matter what, it will never be the fantasy. You know, no matter what, it will never be that. And so that fantasy makes us start to feel imbalanced. And that's when we start getting really off track, right? With the two of pentacles, because we start trying to make our fantasy come into reality. And we're dealing with another person who may or may not want the exact same things you do, or may not see it the same way you do, or may not have the intentions that they're saying that they have. And so we become, we begin to get super imbalanced trying to bring something into reality that maybe isn't really what's meant for the situation. And then what happens is we miss what's meant for the situation. We start overlooking the red flags. We start, you know, because we're still over here trying to make this fantasy a reality or we're trying to, you know, say, don't you see it too? Don't you feel it too? Don't you, you know what I mean? It's like, no matter what, it's a self-sabotaging behavior and it's in our head. And what happens is when it doesn't work out or when it becomes completely imbalanced or when someone lets us down or disappoints us, what happens is we think it's us. We think, okay, what did I do? And really it's not. And really it's, it's that maybe it played out exactly the way that it was supposed to play out. Maybe this person was just a lesson for you all along. Maybe the lesson even was to not get carried away with our hopes, our dreams, our, and our fantasy of the best possible way this relationship could work out. Maybe it is that in this time, when we have an attitude of gratitude for exactly what is in front of us and for the possibilities and for the potential, and for the excitement we feel about discovering it together instead of like creating something, when we start doing that, we actually, people start to feel that we have expectations. And when people feel that you have an expectation, they're almost always going to let you down because they start fearing that they're going to let you down. And what you think about, you bring about. So when you get your hopes up and then you're dealing with someone who is like intimidated by expectations or is like, I don't know if I am that person. I don't know if I'm going to, you know, because they have their own insecurities and their own issues and their own baggage. Then, then they start to go, oh my gosh, you know, I really like this girl or I really like this guy. But like, you know, if they're thinking all of that, or if that's what they're hoping for, or they're expecting, I don't really know if I can deliver that. You know what I mean? And so then they start to fear that they're not enough and then boom, you know, all of a sudden the thing is not sustainable anymore. So what we want to do is always stay in a place where we're accepting life exactly as it comes and ex accepting things exactly as they are and not needing them to be something else. Because life exactly as it is, is beautiful and it is as perfect as it can be, even if we're suffering in that moment. It is something that we can learn through, can grow through, and can get closer to the truth through. It is an opportunity. No matter if it's a good opportunity, if it feels wonderful, or if it feels like suffering, it's an opportunity. And it, ultimately, it is an opportunity for freedom and liberation from this kind of energy of having expectations or not letting life just be what life is. And saying, it is beautiful this way. I can appreciate it just the way that it is. I don't need something more from it. I, I can just say, okay, this is how it is. And so it is. And great. You know, it doesn't mean that I can't 
be manifesting in that moment. It doesn't mean that I can't be saying, gosh, you know, what I'd really like to attract is this and then working to become the vibration of that thing that I'm trying to attract because that's how we attract things. Um, and when you are in an attitude of gratitude for life exactly the way that it is, guess what you're doing? You're in a very high level manifesting energy. So there is this energy of things coming in very quickly when we release these tendencies that we have. Um, and these tendencies are not natural. These tendencies are thrust upon us by conditioning from the outside world, okay? Our, if we were in our natural state, we would be in a state of peace with what is, and we would be open to the flow, and we would be understanding that there is an ebb and a flow. There is a give and a take. There is a sometimes it's all working out for you, and sometimes it's not. And we wouldn't feel disappointed by both. Because um, that's, that's pretty much, you know how you feel. Even when things are going your way, there's almost sometimes a disappointment there. Okay, we have the Hermit. Oh, there's Temperance. Look at that. Even the colors of these two cards are the same. Um, and the Chariot. Yep. When we find this balance and this harmony and this acceptance of life just the way that it is, we have the Hermit here. So I've seen this energy around you guys for quite a while. There is this element of having been by yourself or being by yourself right now in a way of where it's like you are really coming to a place of deeper understanding of what you want and how everything that has come before now has brought you to this place and coming to a place of peace and acceptance with it. And that is what is freeing you to kind of like come into a new period of time of great growth and great expansion here with the chariot and temperance. This is when everything comes together perfectly. The temperance and the chariot are both major arcana that talk about balance. They're both very balanced energies. So this is like where you are harmonizing. You are in a state of balance with life on its own terms, you know, not needing it, not feeling like I'm constantly getting gypped or I'm constantly getting disappointed or I'm constantly getting let down. It's, it's just a place of, you know, it is what it is. And now that I am in this space where I see it for the way that it is and that I'm okay with it, the way that it is, it's freeing me up to move. It's become a stable base for me to operate from, from me to go off and achieve the success and the victory that I've been looking for that's been eluding me. Um, because now I have this different approach. Now I, I'm not coming from the instable place of Neptunian fanta fantasy energy. I'm coming from a place that's deeply rooted and centered and is accepting life on life's terms and is saying, oh, okay, so I'm starting off in this place called life. All right, now how do I want to navigate it? Now how do I want to move through it? Instead of trying to want life to be something other than the way that it is or needing it to be something other than the way that it is and feeling constantly let down and disappointed that it isn't different. You know what I mean? Um, because, it, it, yeah, I hope that's good. Let me um, clarify this chariot. The chariot is oftentimes, wow, um, an energy of, um, you know, wow, yeah, star card on the bottom of the deck. Of, um, yeah, look at that. Of, um yoking up with a partner that is very meant to be oh my gosh <sighs> Pisces so what I feel you're, you're letting go of is this burden of with the queen of swords it it is it's a burden of a mindset that is not serving your highest and best and I just don't know how else to say it besides that um, I can't even think of a way to like articulate beyond that space, but it's, 
it is really letting go of a mindset that has been burdensome, that has left you feeling very disappointed, that has left you in a place where, um, you know, why do we fantasize? Like why? Because because we're fantasizing because we don't like life the way that it is and we need it to be different we need the things outside us to be different to validate or to to tell us that we're okay or that we're on the right track or that we're the chosen one or whatever it is like whatever it is and that mindset is not ever really going to serve us because life is always going to keep being what life is. And so when we're trying to create a world in which life is different than what it is, it, it, we're actually just taking ourselves out of the opportunity to appreciate and enjoy life the way that it is and utilize it and navigate it to the highest and best ability because we're always going to be disappointed that it's not living up to this fantasy with the seven of cups. When we accept life on its terms and we, you know, really say, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. All right. And you know what? This is how it's been until this point. Let me come to a place of peace and acceptance with it. And let me begin here. Let me start where I am and let me create and, and navigate in in the most balanced grounded centered way that i can and sort of i keep getting this the uh airbender avatar airbender or something it's like let me bend it to my will let me let me deal with what I'm actually dealing with. And instead of like going into my fantasy mind and creating some world that, that doesn't exist, let me take the world that I'm actually living in and bend it into what I need or want it to be um, with my choices. And there is this energy of the lovers and the 10 of coins here with this chariot. And this is where, okay, the chariot is after a long battle, I'm experiencing victory. I'm, I'm riding off victoriously into the sunset and I'm equally yoked with a partner who has the same capacity as I do to bring about success and victory. And they're sharing a vision with me. We are always headed in the same direction. We are always on the same page because we want the same things. We have the same vision and all of our choices reflect that. Um, And that's actually the fantasy, but it can happen in reality, if that makes sense. With the star card, this is divine timing. This is, you know, a restoration of hope and optimism with a new approach and a new mindset that is actually serving you instead of being at your detriment. We all have natural tendencies and we all, you know, our zodiac sign is not, not, nothing. You know what I mean? It matters. It, it definitely affects our personality and, you know, or yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll just say it that way. Um, and, and so these are, these are lessons. These are opportunities for us in this life as a Pisces, as a Libra, right? To, um, to, learn from and to grow from and to reach greater enlightenment with. And when you find a new way of navigating that works for you and starts to bring you the results that you're looking for and that you want, you do start to feel more hopeful and optimistic. You do start to feel like there is something much more connected out there. It's, it's when you're going into fantasy land and then life doesn't match that because life is not a fantasy land at all. Um, you know, that we get disappointed, that we get let down and that we tend to like cling and force and go into lower vibrational energies, trying to make it be what we want it to be. We saw that two of coins. It makes us very imbalanced. It gets us all off our rocker. It makes us in a space where, you know, we can't navigate successfully because we're just trying to stay afloat in the moment. And we're trying to, to sort of like maintain hope that it can be the fantasy. And we're bending over backwards to try to maintain that 
instead of saying, let me just look at what is. And let me just see, okay, what are the good parts of what is? What do I want to highlight? What do I want more of? What, how, what free will choices, what things can I do in order to bring this about and working more with the fates then, um, and really opening ourselves up to them, um, by not insisting on having it our own way. Um, and that's when the abundance comes in. Um, I've seen in the comments, people talking about wanting abundance or, you know, wanting financial, needing a financial miracle or whatever. Well, when you have the star card and the 10 of coins in your reading right here, Pisces, that's, a pretty good sign that something good is coming. I don't know if you could see my fingers, but you have the star card and the ten of coins here. But it's not going to come about by tricking your brain, by tricking your mind, or by going into some fantasy <coughs> about winning the lottery or something like that. It's going to come about by your successful maneuvering and navigating life. And you have it in you. And, and yeah. All right, let's go. You're definitely calling in a soulmate. I feel like you're definitely going to have some kind of opportunity with some type of long-term partnership where there's a lot of growth. Yeah, it's saying put down your burden here with the 10 of wands and you have that 10 of wands there. Look at this, you guys. See, look at this. You have this disappointment energy. Um you, okay, so you have um Interesting. The devil on the bottom of the deck. This is breaking free of everything that holds you back. You know, she's trying to rock climb and she's got every possible thing, you know, preventing her from being able to move in any direction here and, you know, clipping her wings. And that's what we do to ourselves. That's, you know, we, we sometimes will say, oh, life is doing that to me, but no, we're doing it to ourselves. So there is this energy of just releasing ourselves from this energy of illusion and fear. And when you have the Four of Cups here, it's constant disappointment by the results. And um, you, you are releasing yourself from this energy. You are, you are closing out the cycle with the Ten of Wands. You're putting down your burdens. You're breaking free of, of this which has been holding you stagnant or making you stuck or making it so that you're not able to really understand your own capacity in life um, and where you're feeling totally disappointed all of the time. And you have the Three of Cups with the Lover's card here. This is a huge celebration. You're coming together with someone that I feel like there's a lot of happiness and a deep, deep understanding and a deep shared love. It's a soulmate. What is this? Hmm. Yeah, this, I'm telling you guys, this is, a, it's a change in your mindset. That's what it is. You have, yes, it's a healing. Oh my God. And you're passing through some kind of spiritual gate here. You're not going back to this energy, Pisces. You're freeing yourself from it and you're not going back. You've got the hierophant here. You're not going back. You will not come back to this energy again. Um, you have the hangman with the three of swords. This is changing your perspective on your past suffering or on suffering as a general rule or how you have thought, how you've allowed, how, what the way that you think about suffering. Um, it's your, this is a massive moment of clarity and a massive, massive mind shift. You have the ace of swords here. Um, you've got the four of swords with the here fit here. There is healing that leads to some type of spiritual upgrade or some type of big enlightenment, something it's like, I'm shifting my mindset to a much higher vibrational energy of a much higher level way of thinking. And I'm not going back to this past way. I'm totally breaking free of this. Once you open this up, I'm telling you, I feel like this comes in very quickly. Um, all right, Pisces, I, I think I'm going to leave it there. You're having a shift in a mindset or it's available to you now. And it's going to free you from the disappointment that I feel you have felt about life or about past relationships or about the way things have worked out for you in the past. It's a major, 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 major shift in 
the way you're even looking at your past suffering or suffering in general. Um, and the way you're looking at life or the way that you're accepting life on its own terms. All right, if you're dealing with a water sign, Pisces, I couldn't let you get close to me. I know I messed up everything. Rejection. This rejection is actually divine protection. That can be sometimes a different way of looking at things. Go slow. Take time to get to know each other. Lesson. This, perfect, this person is in your life to teach you a spiritual lesson. I wish I could take back my words. I regret lying to you. All right. And you're dealing with a fire sign, Pisces. Holy Toledo. I replay our conversations in our head. Abundance. You've done the work. Abundance flows to you now. True love. This love is emotional, physical, and unconditional. I am recovering. I know you don't feel the same. I can't get enough of you. I have trouble with intimacy. I admire you. Balance. One person is giving too much in this relationship. My life is not as together as it seems. If you are dealing with an earth sign, you're getting, I need security. I want you so badly. I can be myself with you. I don't want to let you go. I'm not financially stable. If you are dealing with an air sign, oh my gosh, you guys. Um, you didn't see my tears. It's time to decide about this relationship. I don't know why this happened. Um, time apart, some distance will help bring clarity. Play hard. Find time to laugh, goof off, and enjoy each other. Do I still have a chance? The timing just wasn't right for us. Support. Lean on your inner circle during this time. Passion. Try something you've never done before. I'm so attracted to you, and you were the best thing in my life. All right, Pisces. Man, I really hope this helps. You are... The beginning of a major shift is happening or has happened or is this is confirmation or you're moving toward it. And as you shift this mindset and as you become, I feel like it's a higher vibration because of this mindset. It's like you're passing through a spiritual gate here with your mindset that is going to bring about very, very, very different results and is going to draw different types of people towards you here. Okay, um, it just feels pretty significant. Um, I'm, I feel very like, um, um, I, I just feel lighter and liberated um, in this energy here. All right, um, so I hope this helps. I hope this brings you some peace and clarity. If it does, of course, let me know. Like, share, subscribe. I love you guys. If you are interested in a members kind of membership thing here on YouTube with me. Um, it, it wouldn't, it, I mean, I probably will do some extended videos, but I leave it all on the table every day. I, I'm not going to be like, oh, okay, you know, here you go. Well, let me tell you some more stuff about it over here. Like, I, that's just not me. I might get more specific about it, but I have to go through all, I started this channel for this reason, <laughs> like to not do things like that. So, um, so anyway, I, what I'm interested in is like sipping paints, book clubs, chit chatting, talking, um, you know, talking about the readings, uh, you know, together, like, expo you know, walking each other home. That's what I'm interested in. Um, and so anyway, if you're interested in that too, and you would like to have like some zoom meetups and stuff like that that could be recorded for people in other time zones and if they want to make a contribution they could email me their contribution beforehand and then they could watch as we take on those topics um or you know take on even what their questions or what they want to talk about as well um and it would be almost as if as good as being live you know i i, I don't know logistically if it's possible still but um, I'm going to continue to investigate that and then I will open it up to all of you as soon as I can. Um, and I'm really excited about your response to it because I know it's a little bit different for a tarot channel, but it really came to me that day while I was painting. So um, anyway, <laughs> and you don't have to paint and you don't have to sip. You can just hang out too. Um, but I just love the energy of creating and you guys are such a creative sign. So 
Anyway, guys, if you're into it, let me know. We can talk about topics. We can talk about the readings. We can talk about things that came up from the readings. We can talk about, you know, anything at all and support each other and create like a really beautiful community. I feel like we already have a beautiful community here, but there are just certain things that I don't necessarily always want to just throw out there to a general YouTube audience as well. All right. So anyway, until next time, you all, I'm sending you off with all my very best. Always, always, always. Bye-bye.